I've always wanted to make a series of videos about my plant journeys, about how I acclimate my plants, but I can't seem to get it work. So this uh, time around, I've got a new batch of plants that I wanted to show you how I'm going to be caring for them. I'm going to take you through repotting, through acclimating, and basically all around care for my plants. Hey guys, welcome back to Kali Plants and for our third part on our succulent journey, we're gonna be doing the bottom watering of these succulents. Actually, this is not the first time that they will be receiving uh, bottom watering. I bottom watered them before, so now I'm just gonna show you how I do that. So I have here chopstick, okay, piece of chopstick and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check if their potting mix is dry. Just so you know how I check my potting mixes on my plants. So I'm just gonna stick the chopstick down here and check if the organic materials on my potting mix is dry already. So this is one is already dry. Okay, so this is our um, Romeo. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dunk it right here. Okay, you can see that? Nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the uh lawi next so i actually watered them a few days ago but since it's cold enough and since that they are already dry since they are in the clay pots so i can, i think i can water them right now and the plants are still dry so you can see here it's been more than a month since i got them but they are still dry so because i've been actually very careful with them so that they won't die because uh, we're doing a journey with them you'll be following my updates on these plants so i'm careful not to kill them and sadly one of the plants i have here the tomentosa got stem rot so i had to remove it because it had stem rot so it was right here and the plant just flopped over one day so i took it out and yeah the stem is already rotting in the middle so i took off the bottom part of the stem and i'm just laying this down so this one um i haven't been watering a lot okay the ones that i haven't showed you also in our uh, other updates is our super bomb i planted them together as you can see here i planted it with my other super bomb and this is already dry okay so since this is newly potted okay I will just dunk it like that. So now let me just dunk all the other dry plants here. Some of them are not as dry as others. Some of them I was watered recently. So the ones that I watered recently and still are firm, I'm going to be dunking them. And also I've got some issues on my other plants. So this one and this one I have got some mealybugs. So I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that after we dunk these other succulents. So you can see here this is already squishy so that means that it's already dry okay you can already take in water so i'm nudging on them i'm trying to pull on the plant and they're already fixed into the potty mix you can try bottom watering your plants already if you uh, nudge on them and then they're attached to their potty mix already so that's how you know that um, your top watering is already successful and then they are already establishing the they're already attaching to their potty mix so if you pull it like this and it's no longer easy to pull so that means it's established okay so let me just check on the other ones this one i believe i watered it recently okay so i won't be watering this So I can already be dunked also. Okay. So now I have problems with this one. Okay. We've got a lot of ants actually on this one. So let me just switch the camera so that you can see what the problems I have with these two succulents. Okay, so pardon the bad lighting guys because we're filming at night so this one okay you might not be able to see it but there are mealybugs right there at the middle to set okay so there are speckles so i actually 
uh, rinse this before to, to try and get rid of the mealy bugs. So now we're gonna rinse it again. I'm gonna show you the mixture that I make. I will be making. So this one, it actually has a lot of ants. Okay, so uh, the ants are all over the trays right now, and it came from this one. I don't see any visible mealy bugs. Would that be mealy bugs? So I'm not sure. Okay, I'm just inspecting. But they're already attached to the soil. Okay, maybe this one isn't. Okay, it's got plenty of mealies. So you can see those. Those are mealy bugs. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. Try and fix that. I'm gonna be washing them off. Okay. So let me just try and fix them here. So when you've got problems like this, it's best to remove as much as you can manually because just hosing them down is not gonna help right away so this one probably had mealybugs when it was still planted before so there are plenty on this one so this is a problem actually that I'm gonna have to deal with the last plant I had which had this problem is my compactum actually but now that compactum is recovering so i also think that this problem became worse since this plant was producing flower stalks so see that so those actually attract mealybugs but i'm also guessing that this one already had mealybugs when it first came in so this could be a little bit embarrassing for me because i usually don't have this problem but since this is part of the journey, um, we're going to try and fix this. So we're going to use um, alcohol. Okay. And this is an sanitizer alcohol, 70%. And we're going to use um, dishwashing soap. So I have got a stock of uh, dishwashing soap here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a few drops of that soap into our water. So let me just take a few drops. Sorry guys, I don't have anything to measure with. <laughs> okay. Now, we're gonna transfer some amount of alcohol. Okay. Just a few drops. already and now we're gonna add more water we're gonna fill this up What I find is good with this mixture, with this solution, is that um, it doesn't remove the farina because we all know some other insecticides, um, they have this like white powdery effect on the plant once you spray your plants with them. But this one, this solution, what, uh, ordinary soap and some alcohol, it doesn't remove the farina and doesn't leave any marks. So this could be a quick fix if you're trying to remove pests on your plants. But I would still recommend that you use some other type of insecticide so that you won't get an infestation on your plants. So this could be a quick fix if you don't have any uh, insecticides. Also, I would not recommend you do this very often because I believe alcohol stunts the growth of plants so it makes them grow slow slower so yeah you're just gonna have to be careful with um, overusing this type of solution okay so what we're gonna do okay so since this is uh, this has an infestation i'm just gonna rinse all the root parts of the plant okay so you can see So I make sure that the plant is very dry before I do this because uh, so it won't get pests. 
Oh, I mean, it won't get rot. Okay. So, the plant is very dry. So, I think it can handle some water. Okay, I'm just gonna rinse it. So, you can see here the, the farina is very clean. So, if I wash this, if I rinse this with soap, those farina will not be removed. Okay. So, you can see. So, again, as I said, only do this if your plant is thoroughly really dry. So, I've checked these plants they are very dry before i do this and also don't do this in the middle of the day because water on the leaves and humidity on plants when it's hot can cause problems it can cause rot sunburn so don't do this in the middle of the day which is why we're doing this at night so that tomorrow when it's getting hot they will be dry already okay and now I'm just gonna add more water on this so on this one since the mealybugs are in the center of the rosette, I'm just gonna be spraying them at the center. Okay, and I'm hoping that this will also deal with the mealybugs underneath. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here? Right where the mealybugs are. Trying to really keep putting pressure on it. So to try to remove the minis. Okay, we run out of water. So let me just dump this in. So you can see here, this is still soapy. <laughs> and it's dripping wet, okay. So I don't usually do this. This is just for uh, special occasions, special <laughs> stuff like this. So I don't always, I would also recommend this very much on your plants if they don't have a lot of pests. If you can remove the pests that you see, uh, you don't have to do a drastic thing like this but this really helps um, I think because this used to have a lot more mealybugs before and after I rinsed them for the first time I saw a lot less mealybugs on it so now that I'm doing this for the second time I'm more confident that it can really help my plant so also I wouldn't be rinsing this plant yet you can see that it still has some bubbles on it I won't be rinsing it yet so that I won't remove the effect on the insects so it can still kill the insects inside the plant so yeah i'm just gonna let it look like that and tomorrow i'm gonna show you what the plant looks like when it's dry already also i'm gonna be showing you what these plants will look like tomorrow but first let me just switch the camera again so you can see how my plants are doing in the watering uh watering basin we have here okay okay so here we have our plants you can see they're still um, drinking so you can see here that the potting mix gets moist through the holes it has at the bottom so the, through the holes of the pot at the bottom and the potting mix will absorb the water so you see that i find that with my uh, potting mix it absorbs water very quickly I find that really nice because I don't have to wait very long. Okay. So this bottom watering really helps the plants recover. So okay. So I know also a lot of you guys are wondering how to make your succulents fat again after buying them, after shipping, after replanting them because most of the time these succulents will look very dry after repotting them and after giving them just drops of water here and there so bottom watering actually helps a lot with that it helps with the succulents getting fat again so i can expect that this lawi and that this romeo will become firm and filled with full with water again once they are already drinking more water through bottom watering so what happens is if the if you bottom water your plants the roots will become much more bigger and much more stronger so because they're fine root hairs the ones that they are growing still growing while they are newly potted so their first, first root hairs will be very thin so with this bottom watering it will make the roots really attach into their potting mix and really make them stronger so that the roots will grow and it will make the plant develop much more quicker so you don't have to really <coughs> expect you really uh, shouldn't expect your plant to get fat very quickly after repotting them after watering them for the first two or three times you really have to wait for them for about a month or two before you can see them getting plump and getting beautiful again 
So now what I'm going to do, after they soaked in the water that they need, I will be transferring them back to our trays. And then I will be moving them back to the greenhouse. So I have my greenhouse that way. So tomorrow, early in the morning probably when it's already bright and when the sun is shining, I will be recording um, what they look like after bottom watering. So yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, we're back at the greenhouse. So today is actually the second day since we did that bottom watering with our succulents. So now I'm gonna switch the camera and I'm gonna show you how the succulents are looking, how they're doing. Okay, so they're actually out of the trays already because I placed them back where I stationed them where they are usually placed. Okay, I placed my succulents very separately depending on their needs. So here we have our um, Ebony, oh uh, no, Romeo. Here we have our Romeo. You can see it's dry already. So it still hasn't plumped yet, but it's attached itself to the soil. Okay. So we also have here our Lawi right here. So it's got some firmness to it. It's fighting back, but the leaves are not plump yet. But this one, it has some thickness to it. So you can pretty much say that when you first water your plants, the leaf at the center will be the priority that will be getting the water and the uh, leaves at the bottom part of the plant will be the less priority so it will not plump back it will be the last one to plump back up okay so we have here our albicans which already gets a lot of sun actually the sun just shown right now um, earlier this day it was actually pretty cloudy so now they're getting more sun okay so here is our other fuzzy echeveria really nice the leaves have plumped back okay here's our other fuzzy echeveria and here's the other one see really pretty okay here is our lovely rose so the leaves are getting plump okay the bottom one not so much yet what else so here is our calancho tomentosa which is getting more open so I think that it's starting to need water. So this one, firm, okay, it's got some firmness to the leaves. Our super bum, right here, okay, I'm touching the bottom leaves and it's got some heft to it. So the, I think yesterday it was very cloudy during the afternoon and this morning it was cloudy as well. So I think it really helps the plants to absorb the water when the temperatures are not that hot when it's cloudy so i think it's very nice that they were wet during those times okay so this one as well our dusty rose so you can see here it no longer have ants at the middle and the farina isn't damaged and there's no marking on the soap that we used on it so it's also getting a little bit more firm than the last time so i think it's really nice it didn't die with our spraying of the soap okay same with albicans, okay? It hasn't changed a lot. So I know there's still a few, there's still very little roots on this one. So we're just gonna wait for it to develop a little bit more. Here is our chihuahuaensis, our cat's paw, after watering. So since they're getting plenty of light, you can see that the rosette is closing up. So you can see here, I actually expect it to soon become like this, our other cat's paw, which is really closed up really pretty so maybe the next update that i will be making on these plants will be in the following couple of weeks maybe once i have some progress with them and also if they get problems i will also be making an update so that we can all know how to fix the problems of our succulents okay so now we're back with an update on our plants and i think that we already have our first casualty so maybe um, it was just one okay and I think the others are still surviving so I will switch the camera and I will show you what happened with my succulents okay so here is our first um, update on our plant first plant on our update so this is the frost you see that didn't change a lot it didn't change a lot I wasn't watering because we're getting less Sun currently actually it's very cloudy today okay on our lawi you can see here still thin but it's got some new growth at the middle and the leaves are still thin 
I've been very cautious when watering this one. We also have our Romeo right here, still dehydrated. So it actually was a very long time since I made the first part of this video and this is an update. And it's still quite dehydrated because I believe that it's still rooting. I believe that this one took a longer time before it attached to its potting mix. So we have that. We have our Chihuahuaensis right here. I co-planted it with another Chihuahuaensis that I have that was alone in a small pot. So I think that um, they will do well planted together. Okay, so there's that. We have our fuzzy Caveria here. I featured it recently on our other clumping succulents video. So we have that. We also have an update on our Kalankoe. So you can see here, this one I said that it had gotten stem rot at the bottom of its stem but I already replanted it back because the stem had already dried up when I cut it and it had already produced these really long air roots so I had it repotted back and now I believe that they're gonna do well together again okay we have our cinnamon or chocolate soldier calancho right here and this one I believe is one of the better one, the better plants that I got in this batch. It has produced quite some growth and it's very stable already. It's not dropping its leaves. Okay, the leaves are very firm, very, very attached to its stem. So if your leaves are firm, then you know that they're already stable and that they're already getting their water. And if they're getting wilted, you water them, they plump back up again. That's how you know that your plants are going to getting stable but if you water your plants and they're not plumping back up and they're dropping their leaves and that means that the plant has some problems so this one it's gotten firm so i believe that it's already getting quite stable okay we have that um we have our albicans here which i recently repotted because it wasn't doing well in its old pot and it wasn't rooting very quickly so i believe that the albicans um, is a slow rooter so we have that and it's also got it also had mealybugs so i had to clean it up and i had repotted it on this spot so i will not be watering this for a little while until it recovers but i believe that with the cloudy weather that we have um, it will not be very problematic for this plant it will just root flawlessly because we don't get a lot of heat currently in my place now our problematic plant right here is the dusty rose so I'm laying it down on our basin so you can see it's probably all the soap spraying that we did that done and caused fungus on the stem right there. So yeah, that's really sad. So I believe that I won't be doing those soap drenching anytime soon. Okay, that's our first casualty. But I believe that's the only death that we have. Okay. We have our super bomb right here. I co-planted it with my other super bomb. You can see it's still alive. But I feel like it's not drinking any water. So it's getting it's taking too long for it to root to absorb water because the leaves are always this like dry. Okay. So I'm I'm trying to amend that. Maybe I will be putting this in more sun so that it will root much quicker, but let me just check. Okay. Because since I had it co-planted, so it was newly planted, I planted it again. So I believe that it's still establishing itself. But the ones that I co-planted on this one are still firm. And they're not reacting negatively to the replanting. But this one, maybe a little bit not liking the repot. So we're gonna wait for it to reroot and to recover. Okay, and finally on our lovely rose, so you can see it dropped a lot of leaves. It's drying out a lot of leaves. I will be probably be watering this one. Okay, so it used to have leaves on that, on, the, on that stem. Okay, but now it dropped it off. But the plant is still very much alive. Okay, I will just be watering this in a few days or pro probably tonight. And this one is another lovely rose that got um, mushy. Here in my place, it was in a shaded area, it got mushy, so I had it cut and I had it replanted. 
So a lot of my plans are actually, so I meant to say some, not most. Some of my plans are actually reacting negatively to the confusing weather that we have since it's still in summer but we're already getting a lot of rain and we're, we're getting lower temperatures. So some of my plants are getting rot, some of my plants are not drinking water. So yeah, and they're getting mushy even if they're in full sun. So like with this agavoides, so it's producing these mushy leaves, I believe. Okay. So yeah, it's not a very good time to be planting echeveras right now. So um, we're going to have to survive through in this cold weather, in this rainy season that we're having here. So we're just going to try to make them survive, keep them alive until the sun comes back up again and then they will produce new growth again. I believe that maybe in a few months, maybe in August or September, these echeverias, they will produce growth again. And then when the rainy weather comes, when the real uh, winter season comes, they will stop growing again. So I believe that's how my succulents are behaving. That's how I experience their behavior over the course of my care of them. They kind of stop growing in the middle of the summer and then there will be a time during autumn season where they will produce new growth again. And then when the winter comes, they will really stop growing and they will drop a lot of leaves. So if you manage to put some growth on them during the autumn season, then you may be able to keep them alive through the rainy season, through the winter months. So that's what I'm trying to achieve right now. I'm just letting them stay dormant for a little while. But probably um, I will be also watering them. I will be constantly keeping an eye on my succulents. So I will also be making more updates if I find any other problems. So for this dusty rose that we have, that is already dying, okay. So I will, I will probably be propagating the leaves off of this one. Or I will try to cut the stem if I manage to find some stem that is still alive, okay. So maybe we will do that in our next video. But for this update on our succulents, maybe that's about it for now. Okay, so maybe I will see you on our next update. If you don't want to miss that, please make sure to hit the subscribe button below. And also you can hit the like on this video if you really liked it. <laughs> okay, even if we got some problems here. So that's about it for this video, guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.